Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys, and welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. I want to wish you guys a happy Monday and a happy new month, okay? It is now March 2nd, and um, I had a really good weekend. Um, we went out of town for my son's basketball tournament. So when I came back Sunday, I was exhausted. All I did was literally sleep the entire day away on Sunday. And then I woke up about 1 o'clock in the morning, and I seen all of this drama, honey. You know I live. I saw all this drama on online concerning Meg the Stallion and people were like hashtag free Meg hashtag free Meg the Stallion I'm like well damn what happened is her ass in jail who she beat up this time okay because we know she got some hands so anyways that wasn't the case she wasn't in jail wasn't no new mug shots that you know that one was old um so basically what's going down with Meg the Stallion is this she took to social media she went live she was teary-eyed and she explained to the world how she was in this horrible, you know, contract and how they won't allow her to release any new music. And she's really upset that, you know, her old um, record label, who's also her production company, 1501 Certified Entertainment, they're preventing her from releasing new music. And if you want new Meg The Stallion music, you need to hashtag free Meg The Stallion. Free Meg The Stallion. Oh, uh, free Meg the Okay, stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Okay, I was about to remix that bitch. Anyways, I want you guys to go ahead and listen to what she posted on social media. You guys go ahead and check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. When I signed, I didn't really know what was in my contract. I was young. I, I think I was like 20. And I didn't know everything that was in that contract. So when I got with Rock Nation, I got management, real management. I got real lawyers. And they was like, do you know that this is in your contract? And I was like, oh, damn, that's crazy. No, I didn't know. So I'm not mad at 1501. I wasn't upset because I'm thinking in my head, oh, well, everybody cool. We all family. It's cool. It's nice. Let me just ask some niggas to renegotiate my contract. <laughs> Soon as I said, I want to renegotiate my contract, everything went left. Like, it just all went bad. It all went left. So now they're telling the bitch that the, she can't drop no music. It's really just like a greedy game. Like, it's really just real greedy. Wasn't trying to leave the label. Wasn't trying to not give nobody money that they feel like they entitled to. I just want to renegotiate some shit. I'm not a greedy person. I'm not a person that like confrontation. I'm not a person that's a bitch. Like, I work with everybody and I'm nice and I'm real family oriented. But niggas gonna be niggas. And they gonna be greedy and they gonna be shady. And I see the shit that people be, that, you know, that can't be saying about me. And I'll be like, damn, well, since you got so much to say, why you just won't tell them? Why you mad? You mad because I don't because I don't want to roll over and bow down like a little bitch and you don't want to renegotiate my contract. <laughs> Niggas be like, oh, yeah, they made Megan Thee Stallion. Megan Thee Stallion was Megan Thee Stallion before I even got over there. I've been rapping, been freestyling, been doing me. Been, been made. All right, so you guys just watched what she had to say. So, of course, I posted that on social media. Uh, my Instagram and I also stated that well this is kind of strange to me because one she's a college student she always told her intelligence which there's nothing wrong with that by the way but I'm very shocked that somebody who's you know in college and always talking about her intelligence would find herself in a shoddy deal this is really strange so of course her fans took offense because anytime I say anything about any celebrity that's not kissing their ass Fans always get mad, okay? So, I, so all the little stallion people, the horses, I don't know what y'all call yourselves. They got upset. They were going off on me and you don't know nothing. You, you know, not everybody in college knows how to read a contract. And I get that. Everybody does not understand contracts. And just because you have a college degree does not mean that you have vast knowledge in the music industry and the ins and outs, okay? I get that. What I'm saying is that she's a college student. 
And she's been around long enough. Why are we acting like Meg the Stallion is 15 and she's a minor? She's been around long enough to know that this industry is shady. We've all seen the TLC story and how Pebbles did them. We all seen the demise and, and, and the destruction of damn Death Row and how everybody left that record label broke besides Suge Knight. We've seen this happen time and time again to so many artists. So why would she find herself in this situation? Other people are making a point to state that her mother was her manager at the time and knew a lot about the industry, um, you know, and people were questioning, well, why didn't her mother go over the contract? Why did they not bring in a lawyer? You know, so a lot of us were seeing through a lot of the nonsense and we're asking legitimate questions. Other people who are emotionally invested were getting offended, which is fine. But we're going to talk about it because you guys begged me to do a podcast because, honey, my damn Instagram comment section was popping. The back and forth and folks having conversations. If y'all ain't seen it, y'all go over there and go sit slow. But a lot of people asked me to do a podcast, so that's why I'm here, okay? So this is my issue with the entire situation. And I see through a lot of the nonsense. Now, if you remember a few months ago, it was announced that she was leaving the record label, Okay. But what happened is that she told everybody, but she didn't tell the record label. They literally found out when we all found out. And Carl Crawford was not having that. And neither was Jay Prince. And I remember they took to social media to call her out. Now, this was back in September. This was on September 16, 2019, okay? So Jay Prince and Carl Crawford, who is um, Evelyn Lozada's baby daddy, for y'all who don't know, he's a really famous baseball player, okay? He basically took his baseball earnings and he ended up starting his own production company. This was his hard earned money that he used to start this production company. So this is what Jay Prince uh, wrote on Instagram. So this is what he says. He says, the music business is a business filled with sharks and cutthroat people. So congratulations to the homie Carl Crawford, owner of 1501 Record for breaking your first artist, Meg The Stallion. Carl is from my hood. Better known as the Fifth Ward. I'm proud to be his new partner moving forward. Surprise to all that had plans on taking something from him. Good luck with that. This is just the beginning. That was a warning from Jay Prince back in September to not only Meg the Stallion, but to Rock Nation. And y'all can say what y'all want to say. Like, well, who is Jay Prince? He's old school. Ah, ah, ah. Jay Prince is that dude down in Texas. So before y'all get the run of your mouth and talking shit in these comments, make sure you put some respect on his name. That man's been in the game and, you know, his money runs deep. So that was what they posted back in September. So that let me know back then that obviously Rock Nation was in her ear and trying to get her out her deal. And they weren't having it because, like I said, she didn't even have enough respect to go to them and let them know that she wanted out of the deal or what she was unhappy with. She just made the announcement on social media stating that she was leaving her record label. So she made that announcement to us. That was our first time hearing of this. We were all shocked. OK, folks were happy for her. But the thing is, the problem is Meg was signed to um, 1501. And Carl Crawford and them had no idea this was going down. She didn't bother to tell them anything. Something wasn't clean in the buttermilk because if everything was so smooth and copacetic, her record label would not be upset about the situation. And Carl Crawford even explained how he discovered her and all the work that he put into her and the things that he did and how he has not heard from her since she made that announcement. So y'all go ahead and check this out really quick. Uh, going back to Megan, um, what's your relationship with her today? Like, did you guys uh, talk about the Rock Nation deal? Nah, we don't talk. We like we don't really talk right now. You know what I'm hmm. saying? Like, it just is what it is. They upset by whatever they're upset about you know i'm just like i say no trying to keep the emotion i just make sure business goes well you know for whatever reason <laughs> they're upset you know i it is but i think you know i might have said something on social media they're like mm. <laughs> irritated them but you know mm. at that point i was past irritated so uh, <laughs> you know, yeah say whatever yeah what does <laughs> yeah. that do for your business does it make it a little uh tricky nah, or? we just you know we just try to do business the best way we can you know we yeah. just you know like nobody wants to see her career go bad and nothing like that yeah of course you know it was just a uh, situation where we we all started together you know <laughs> everybody when we make these plans we all had a plan of where we wanted to be. She's where she's at. T. Ferris is where he's at. Or why I couldn't be where I wanted to be. You know, mm. for some reason, it's like they wanted me out, you know. Mm. And uh, I don't understand. But the industry. Yeah. Like I say, just, just industry stuff. And I just chalk it up as that. And, of course, you know, athletes, we um, when we get challenged like that, of course, we finna just try to go as hard as we can, you know, just to, you know, just 
show face or just to let a person know, you know, like the show don't stop, you know, we're going to keep it going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how much longer is she under contract? Is it um, projects or is it yeah, a... Yeah, it's projects. A, okay. Yeah. yeah. She 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 has four albums under this. Okay. Yeah. How many has she released now? Two? What's that? How many has she released now? Two? None of those. Two mixtapes. Oh, okay. Yeah. You said that you have Megan signed for at least four albums. Right. That's a long time, you know, to be working around somebody like right. whatever is going on between y'all is that salvageable is that like it's reconcilable business, you know that's yeah. at the end of the day we just keep the business you know um mm -hmm. like i'm saying i'm not I, don't, I haven't even spoken to her since she's since she signed the rock nation so it's no issue with me being around and then like that yeah. you know she still can work and you know i can develop artists and we can move on you know that's what i'm all about just moving forward because you know <laughs> at the end of the day I know the work that I put into that situation, you know what I'm saying? And she understands what I did and you know, I have to be I have to be rewarded for the risk I took on yeah. my own and that's just the nature of the business. I just stay <laughs> separated away, you know, they deem me the bad person and they try to make me be the villain and that's cool. We in this together, you know. What I'm bottom line, yeah. Yeah. It's like, the bottom you know, line. Yeah, man, for real. So, so basically, she still signed. But you know what? Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's you know, it's just a um, rock nation. You know what I'm saying? Every, I mean, it looked good. It looked better on. Um, it looked better on paper when you said to people, "Rock nation." So, right. do you want to speak on that? To like say your part on that, so people know your, you know what, uh, you know, I'm just with people are guessing. Nation. Yeah. About what happened yeah. or whatever. Like yeah, you know, so, so, you know, um, I mean, when you're doing the business with people, you know, you understand that you might have to renegotiate your contract at some point in time. But um, what you don't uh, what you don't calculate is the person that's on side of you, um, you know, turning on you, you know what I'm saying? And when that happens, bring everybody else through, you know what right. I'm saying? That's how we was looking at everything. We were like, man, we're going to try to bring just anything we want to be the pipeline we want to keep on going and just do what we need to do but uh you know lawyers come in man they want it all you know and then they turn you against people you know what i mean this girl never had a problem i never I, mean, I still don't understand why they was upset with me i've never done nothing wrong to this girl i've only told her yes all the time never told her no ever you know what i'm saying so you know the lawyers come in aggressive and they they wanna, they wanna just break you up for no reason. You know the old country and divide right. situation. Yeah. I mean, that's like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? it's yeah. always yeah. ended up like that with the, the yeah, the country and divide thing was real. It's real, man, and they use the, the closest business. people to you, Money, the closest man. people to with you. Yeah, you know, and they don't care. And uh, but you know, like I said, that's why I had to end up calling Jay because you know he specializes in these type of situations. You know, and uh, getting me back to work. You know, but that's pretty much it. They they wanted they she went to Rock Nation, hoping that Rock Nation would get out of the deal with me. That didn't work, and we was just back to business. Yeah. Man, I hope y'all figure it out. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, we gotta figure it out. Yeah. Now, so y'all can get some more out there. Yeah, yeah. 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 y'all you know? came in the game right. and y'all did a, a, a lot together fast. You right. know what I'm saying? And I'm sure. You know, you spent a lot of bread too, right. you know what I'm saying? So I feel like, you know, y'all need to figure it out. Y'all feel like not even that, you know just what I'm you gotta know that's coming from here, this platform, yeah. like that's big in itself. Right. Yeah. To lose. Yeah. Exactly. And this brought it up. Because yeah. like, we don't it's get like a lot of that type of yeah. big time exposure, yeah. man. This is some big shit. You know, that's what like, frustrated me most about it. That's what frustrated yeah. me the most about it because yeah, like I had all that in mind. This is what 1501 was, came here to design to do. It was designed to make it big like that and be, you know, all hell break loose. So for Megan, she just, she just, you know, kind of young, I think. And not, I don't know if she was thinking right or whatever, but when she went and got her lawyers, her lawyers came and threatened to sue me. You know what I'm saying? Take every, you know how they do. They try to come threaten to sue you if you don't renegotiate and all that type of stuff. And, yeah. you know... <laughs> Basically, you know, come take everything, basically, because, you know, they come in and normally a person can't defend themselves or fight back or something like that. And then you just end up giving it all. Well, I don't even want to deal with it. So, but in this case, I had to, like, stand firm because I know what I did in the beginning. I had to show receipts showing all the stuff that, you know, things that we've done in 1501 and mm -hmm. provide all that, you know, for the lawyers and all that type of stuff. So, uh, you know, right now we're in a position where we just kind of 
we're trying to renegotiate the contract deal to where both sides, you know, yeah, both sides are comfortable. And, you know, they had different ideas and different agendas. Right. So at the end of the day, it's really my fault. And that's what people that I talk to, you know, they like, you know, if you took care of your business, we warned you, yeah. we told you about this type of stuff, but right, you didn't right. think it, but you don't think certain things will happen. So for me, my biggest lesson is to stay on top of everything. Like every, everything. Every, yeah. Yeah. Everything. Everything. Yeah. It's the if anything going on, you yeah, get going on. Especially when it's your business. business. Yeah, 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 man. I'll be no, hey, man. Yeah. I'm about to say, boy, nah. let this nigga handle it. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. crazy. Even if they handle it, you got to be yeah. watching over it. It's crazy how yeah. money and fame can change motherfuckers, fool. I mean, yeah. and the thing is, the, the fame. That's what. <laughs> shit. Because, you know, the, the, the money ain't reached the fame, how the fame is yet. But the fame is. Right. What you think her beef is though? What you think she feeling like? Uh, What's her problem with fifteen oh one? I don't know. That's you. Know what yeah. I'm I ain't never talked to her. That's why I said I never knew what I did to her. I don't. I still, right now, I don't know what I did to him. You right. know, other than yeah. not making. Well, hopefully, that ain't no big issue then. So she, yeah. y'all should be able to pick. That seems like some a bad scene. bug in the ear. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, man. Yeah. Y'all can, I feel like y'all can figure that shit out. Yeah, we gonna make it. Cause work. it's too late. I mean, y'all yeah. motherfucker. That, that shit just was. Yeah. You know, that shit went too crazy. To, you know, for it to it, for anything to go wrong now. You know what I'm saying? My, yeah. I, I just want to see the shit work. Hot girl summer, that shit was like on everything. Just think about how big that Everybody shit was. Everybody was screaming. But Houston, shit. we don't really have we shit like that. Yeah, Travis Scott, what I you said. know what I'm saying? That was Travis big Scott, huh? all the time. Right, that shit crazy, man. So. Well, yeah. we don't get it right at each time. Yeah, that shit right now. So, you know, you heard him say he's looking yeah, for yeah. new artists. Yes. You know, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's good to, to have somebody who will be willing to, you know, go over the extra hump to. Make sure. <laughs> that was, this stuff we shouldn't even been going through if that mediation part would have been going right. But you know, it's man, the, you know, it's that H town shit, man. Loyalty is rap, man. man. You can't God, find it. Rap, that Loyalty. I, think it's, Loyalty I, just, is I just think when you get up there, man, because I do like it, like even being on them stages with all them people, man, it, it's a different feeling. I can understand, man. It, may, it do something to you. Even like, like I say, like it's a different feeling from It's sports. another type of yeah. drug. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. It is a drug. Yeah, you know it's what I'm another saying? type of drug. Yeah, mm -hmm. You can get caught up in it quick. And I just saw it happen fast. You know, it just happened real, real fast. We went from 20 people at a show to the shit y'all seeing now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, what's the lesson you learned from this situation? Man, the lesson I learned is just take care of your business. You know what I'm saying? I always took care of my business. But for some reason, I came home. And relax, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Meaning that I gave somebody yes, the job. Oh, you know, I gave yeah, somebody yeah. the power. All right, so you guys just heard what Carl Crawford had to say. So, of course, you know, they're really upset about the, you know, about the decision that she made to leave them. And right now, being that she didn't have enough respect to contact them and let them know, they're not trying to hear what she's trying to say. They're not trying to negotiate with her. So like I said, yesterday she came out blasting them. She was very upset about the situation um, because she's still stuck with them. And basically they're not allowing her to um, get out her label. But what I find very funny is this, okay? One, she has dropped no album. And Carl has stated this. She's signed to a four album deal, okay? She's only dropped mixtape. She hasn't dropped any album. And he's put a lot of money into her. He's invested into her. He believed her when nobody else believed in her, okay? And when you're signing female artists, they do, you know, you have to put a lot more work because, again, the hair, the nails, the makeup, you know, got to stay on point, the body, all that stuff. So it's a bigger investment than even investing in male rappers, right? Nobody's going to invest their money, especially their retirement. He put in his baseball money into this label. Nobody's going to invest all their funds into something and then not recoup their rewards, okay? Not recoup what they invested into that person. And just because Rock Nation is trying to punk them behind the scenes and make them, you know, sign Meg to them or let, you know, Meg go does not mean that they have to go for it. At the end of the day, I don't care if it's Meg, I don't care if it's Little Uzi or any other artist, nobody's going to renegotiate anything with you until they've received a return on the investment. She hasn't dropped one album, okay? Let's not forget that. She has dropped two mixtapes. 
initially there were supposed to be albums, but because the sales were looking very dismal and she wasn't getting the streams that she thought she was going to get, she then turned around and took them from being albums into mixtapes. So technically she has not dropped any official album. So for her to want a renegotiation of a contract, to me is silly and it makes no sense. I know even 2 Chains talked about, you know, the shady ways of Rock Nation, how they try and pull you away from the people who started with you. And 2 Chains addressed this. I want you guys to go ahead and listen to what 2 Chains had to say about Rock Nation. Um, same similarities, right? And so there was a guy in Atlanta by the name of DJ Technique who used to DJ. His name is Tech now. He came to me one day. He told me, like, bro, you're a star. You know what I'm saying? And when he told me that, I, I agreed with him, obviously. But he said that him and his partners wanted to go in business with me and manage me. And we built a relationship from that. And we started growing and getting on the radar. So after Kanye um, called every day, I got a call from, from Hove. And Hove was like, I want you to come to New York. I heard, heard you making a lot of noise. And the only reason, to clarify, the only reason that I, I did not go is because I said, can I bring my buddy Tech with me? I said, DJ Tech. He was like, why you want to bring your DJ for? But I'm trying to tell them that, bro, help me get to the point where I'm on your radar. You know what I'm saying? But it was more like, you can't leave him. Like, I couldn't go by myself, and I, and I just chose loyalty. To get on a time. flight? On a, yeah, I was like, because they were sending so a jet. And they were just like, no, nah, we need you by yourself. And I just chose to, like, chill out. All right, so you guys just saw what 2 Chains had to say. Now, on top of that, Isaac Hayes III also spoke on this situation. And he said, why should at Meg The Stallion or any other artist renegotiate their contract before they even put their album out? The problem is the new people that show up after you start popping get in these artists' heads and turn them against the very people that put them on. That is the problem. And I very much agree with this. A lot of artists have done this time and time again to the people that they came up with. Let's use Miss Deb Antney, for example. Miss Antney has discovered so many people. From Gucci to Nicki Minaj to French Montana, a lot of folks she starts off managing. Then once they start popping, they start getting a buzz, then all of a sudden they want to leave her. They want to go on to what they think is greener pastures. Nicki Minaj did the same thing to Deb Antney. But the difference is Nicki Minaj sat down with Deb, told Deb how she felt and how she felt like, you know, maybe Puffy and Lil Wayne can take her career to the next level. And Miss Antony respected Nikki for that and agreed to let her go. Now, Nikki had to cut a check, but she allowed Nikki to leave and grow. Meg the Stallion did never do that. So you can't compare Meg to Nikki because she never did that. Nikki had a sit down with Miss Deb. And I think that's the main problem that there's a lack of respect on Meg the Stallion's part. OK, now a lot of people are saying, well, you know, y'all don't have the same energy. Y'all was supporting little Uzi when he wanted to get off Atlantic. The difference with little Uzi is that he was in a regular standard, maybe bad contract for a new artist. The problem is when he wanted to renegotiate, they didn't want him to renegotiate. They want him stuck to the same contract. But the difference is Uzi had proven himself. He had sold millions of records. He had, he had sold out tours. He had done a lot of stuff to make Atlantic money. So there was no reason for Atlantic not to renegotiate with little Uzi. That is the difference. Meg Thee Stallion has not proved herself yet. Just because she has a few hot mixtapes and she has strong knees and can twerk, that's not a return in their investment. And that's what some of you guys are conflating. Little Uzi had a proven track record. He made his label money. So when they refused to negotiate and give him something better and give him more of the pie, that was wrong. That's the same thing with Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. Lou Pearlman did the same thing, put them in a shitty ass deal. They understood it. Okay, fine. It's a shitty deal. That's what we signed. We were young. We didn't know. But now that we've made you all this money, it's time to renegotiate. We need a bigger cut of the pie. And Lou Pearlman said, no, fuck y'all. And what happened? They took his ass to court. They were able to get the name in sync, Backstreet Boys, and they were able to get their just dues because they had proven themselves. They had sold millions and millions of records. So to cut them a check for $10,000 was a bunch of greedy bullshit. Meg has not proven herself as of yet. <laughs> And that's what you guys are not understanding. They don't owe her anything and they don't owe her a renegotiation. There's nothing solid to renegotiate with. This is business. This is where she messed up, conflating business with family. There's no family in business. There's no family when it comes to contracts. And it's really sad that a lot of adults are not realizing this. They're literally adults. 
in my Instagram comment section going off on me, you know what I'm saying, who don't understand the first thing about contracts and business and you're supposed to be teaching your children? That's sad. When you sign something, it's a legal binding contract. Nobody cares that she was 20. She was of age. And before you sign anything, we need to have an open and honest dialogue, especially in the black community, about these contracts and the things that go on in the music industry. And instead of sugarcoating shit and making excuses, we need to teach our children what it is to sign a contract. When you sign a contract, it is legally binding. Nobody wants to hear shit after the fact. That is why you need to have a lawyer on board going over everything, making sure that it's fair. And then at that point, if you've done everything, you cross your T's, dotted your I's and you decide to sign everything after that point is on you. So let's start with the excuses. This is business. Another thing I want to point out, because I have posted this on Instagram, is that I, what I find funny about this entire situation is that a year ago, this was March 19th, 2019. Almost a year ago, okay? In a few days, it'll be a year. Somebody had tweeted Megan. This is what they said to her. They said, hope you didn't sign a 360 because your downfall could be soon. She replies back to them after retweeting them. She says, I'm a very intelligent person. You will never have to worry about me putting myself in a situation I don't want to be in. So I find that very, very interesting. That was not even a year ago. So if the contract was so bad, why a year ago you're telling folks that you're an intelligent person, you know what you signed, everything's all good, and then a year later now you're on the on Instagram Live crying, talking about you were young and you signed a shady deal and all this goofy stuff. So this is what this is how I'm feeling about this situation. I feel like this. I believe what happened is that basically Rock Nation has gotten into her head. They're telling her that she could be the next, you know, Nicki Minaj, the next Beyonce, you know, and of course, any company would want to be able to not only produce, have a production deal with a Meg Thee Stallion, but also a management deal. Now, they shouldn't do it because it is a conflict of interest, but people do it all the time, right? If they can get her in a production deal, that's going to be a lot better than a management deal. That's going to be more money because they can always push the management deal. She can always have anybody as a manager. She could sign her best friend, her uncle, whatever. But if they can get on a production deal, that's money. That's generational wealth for Jay-Z and them. So let's keep that real. They're definitely in her ear. Everybody's like, well, she's not signed to them for production. They're just her management team. But the point is they want more than that. Why is her management so concerned with who her production company is? It's really none of their business. They're just supposed to manage her. They have nothing to do with her music and her production. So the fact that they're so involved in having their lawyers go over contracts lets me know that they have ulterior motives. They really want her to sign a production deal with Rock Nation. Meg Thee Stallion really wants to get out of this deal with 1501, not because they did anything to her. Let's make that clear. She wants to get out the deal because she thinks the grass will be greener with The Rock. She'll be in better hands with Jay-Z and them. It happens all the time. OK, like I told you all earlier in the podcast, look how many artists have did Miss Anthony wrong where she done invested into them, got them popping, got them polished, everything else. And then once they blow up, they leave her for Diddy, Jay-Z and whoever else. It happens all the time. People are just not loyal nowadays to the people that they came up with. And that's really unfortunate. Now, to people saying that her mother was in the industry and, you know, her mom knew a lot about the industry. And if she did, and her mom was her manager, I highly doubt that her mother would allow her daughter to sign a horrible contract. This is why I'm side-eyeing this whole situation. I got to keep it real. I feel like Meg is now doing the sympathy play. Because as we all know, the artist is always the victim. The people behind the scenes are evil. They're Illuminati puppets and everything else. So if I can go on, you know, Instagram Live and basically shame and blast my production slash record company and shame them and have people hashtag free Meg the Stallion, then they'll be forced to release me. I don't believe her contract is that bad because even in her whole two minute rant, she couldn't explain what Carl did wrong. What was in the contract that was so foul? She didn't say they were stealing money from her. She didn't say that they were taking all of her tour. She didn't say they were getting 90%. She was only receiving 10%. She couldn't even state anything in that contract that she was really upset with. There was nothing. I, I got a lot of nothing. I feel like she's doing this for attention and she's doing this as a sympathy ploy because little Uzi did the same thing and he eventually was able to get released and go to Rock Nation.
But the difference with little Uzi, like I told you guys, he had facts to show that, yo, this is what I'm worth and this contract is bullshit. She has none of that at this point. Her album is getting ready to drop if it drops. But as of now, it hasn't dropped yet. And that's the problem. And I just, I feel like I don't see her mother allowing her 20-year-old daughter to sign to a shady deal if her mother's in the industry and she understands the industry and she was managing Meg. So to me, I don't feel like this is the case. I feel like this is just Meg wanting to get out of a contract because she thinks things will be bigger, brighter, and greener if she gets on with The Rock and she has The Rock do her whole, you know, production in-house and all that stuff. That's really what it boils down to. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. Have you heard the tea? About lovely tea, that is. We use real herbs for a robust and flavorful experience. Our teas are easy to make and very delicious. We carry everything from wellness teas to fruit teas, even flavored matcha. We also have special blends that are made specifically for men and children. There is a lovely tea option for every tea sipper out there. But that's not all. We also offer tea essentials, such as CBD honey sticks and on-the-go tea bottles. You can find us at lovelyteadea.net or on Amazon.com, where we offer prime shipping. Make sure you hurry, because this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, so I am back here after that message from our sponsor. <laughs> so anyways, this has been a all-day podcast to put together because I've been gathering information, waiting to see if anything else happens. And as of about, I want to say, 6 o'clock this evening, um, TMZ did a post, and we posted this on my Instagram page, and basically Meg Thee Stallion is now suing Carl Crawford, and Jay Prince, okay? So this is what's being reported by TMZ. I'm going to go ahead and read this to you guys here. So they're stating, Meg Thee Stallion says certain execs at her record label have a rep of bullying and strong arm tactics, but she's taken a stand by taking them to court and she's already won a major battle. Meg went on the offensive by filing a lawsuit Monday against 1501 Certified Entertainment and its honcho, Carl Crawford. As you know, she's pissed about the contract she signed with the label when she was 20 and claims it's not blocking her from releasing new music because she wants to renegotiate. A district judge in Harris County, Texas, granted Megan a temporary restraining order, which prevents her label from blocking the music that she plans on dropping Friday. In this suit, Meg lays out the most outrageous terms of her contract. For instance, she claims the deal calls for 1501 certified to get 60% of her recording income. The remaining 40% goes to her, but she has to use that to pay engineers, mixers, featured artists who work on the songs. Megan claims that there's a small slice of pie left for her when it's all said and done. She also says her live gigs currently benefit the label more than her. According to the suit, the contract calls for all the money for Megan's touring live performances to be paid directly to 1501 Certified. She says the label is supposed to give her a proper accounting of what she's owed, but claims what they provided is incomplete and purposefully, deceptively vague. Meg also claims that Crawford has been using his relationship with Rap A Lot Records founder Jay Prince to intimidate people in the industry in the suit. She claims Crawford pressured a producer to hand over beats by saying Prince would be pissed. Meg claims Prince is notorious in the industry for strong-armed intimidation tactics and the comment was taken as a physical threat of harm. So that is what's being reported that she's now suing them. So in my personal opinion, watching how all this has played out in the past 48 hours lets me know all of this was contrived. They've been planning on doing this. They were trying to work it behind the scenes by punking Carl. And when that didn't work because Jay Prince jumped into it, now they've decided to basically publicly shame him, start the hashtag free Meg, and then she ran to file a lawsuit today and get a temporary restraining order to be able to release her music. But now this is why I have to give Meg the side eye. So a lot of people are pushing this narrative, including TMZ, that she was only 20 years old. She was a tiny lass when she signed this record deal. But from when I do my calculations, if you go on and you Google Meg the Stallion's age, it says that she's 25 years old. Now, if you go ahead and if you go to Wikipedia or any, you know, site that shows when she signed with that record company. So if you go on there, you'll see where it says 
In early 2018, Meg Thee Stallion signed to 1501 Certified Entertainment, an indie label in Houston owned by former baseball player Carl Crawford. In June of that year, she released a 10-song EP under the label called Tina Snow. So again, when she signed that record deal, okay, with 1501, she was not 20 years old. Because if you go on to Google... It clearly states that her age is 25. She just turned 25 February 15th. So that means when she signed that contract in 2018, which was just two years ago, she was 23. She was not 20. So there goes one lie right there. Okay. I got to give her the side eye. She's trying to say 20 to make herself sound younger. Not saying that 23 is much older, but you can get a lot more sympathy and saying that, oh, I was young. I was only 20. Then you can if you just say you were 23, you know, 24-ish, right? So that's one lie that she got caught up in. So now if you go back to where I have played Carl's podcast, if you notice in that podcast, um, basically Carl was saying that Rock Nation was trying to punk him and sue him. I'm going to go ahead and replay that part for you guys so you guys can hear this. At some point in time, but um, what you don't, uh, what you don't calculate is the person that's on side of you, um, you know, turning on you, you know what I'm saying? And when that happens, you know, all hell break loose. So for Megan, she just, she just, you know, kind of young, I think, and not, I don't know if she was thinking right or whatever, but when she went and got her lawyers, her lawyers came and threatened to sue me, you know what I'm saying? Take care, you know how they do, they try to come threaten to sue you if you don't renegotiate and all that type of stuff. And, you know, basically, you know, come take everything, basically, because, you know, they come in and normally a person can't defend themselves or fight back or something like that. And you just end up giving it all. Well, I don't even want to deal with it. So, but in this case, I had to, like, stand firm because I know what I did in the beginning. I had to show receipts showing all the stuff that, you know, things that we've done in 1501. And provide all that, you know, for the lawyers and all that type of stuff. So so you guys just heard him say that her lawyers threatened to sue him. He said this back in November. So I find it very mighty convenient that Meg Thee Stallion did all this hoopla yesterday on Instagram. They started the hashtag. Then today she officially files a lawsuit against Jay Prince and Carl Crawford. OK, because she thought embarrassing and shaming them on social media would make them punk out and let, you know, basically release her to Rock Nation. And when they stood strong, was like, we're not releasing you. You know, what I'm saying this is not a game. You think this is funny. This is not OK. Then she ran to file the lawsuit. But what she's not anticipating is that Carl ain't no hoe. And he's not going to be playing any games with her. Neither is Jay Prince. And what she doesn't realize is that she's really, you know, going up a slippery slope. One, you know, basically dragging Jay Prince into all this mess. And then two, if you go and you look at Carl's likes on his um, Twitter page, one of the comments that he liked it was this. It says, baby, they ain't wrong at all. Meg's out here lying, defaming at 1501 Certified Entertainment. Character saying she signed at 20 when she signed in 2018 and she was 23 and her mom was her manager. So at this point, it looks like Carl is definitely willing to fight and he may have a strong defamation case because she lied about her age. She made it seem like she was younger than what she was. And a lot of the stuff that she's saying is not truthful. Am I saying that everything that she's telling TMZ about the contract is OK? No. But again, this is a contract, a standard contract for unknown artists. What people don't realize in the record business is, do you know how many people that these record labels and people who start up labels invest their money into and they don't blow up? Do you know how many flops they have before they get that, you know, that, that diamond in the rough? So that's why these contracts look so horrible because again, who wants to invest so much money into somebody only to not get their return? And that's the issue that people don't understand. It's not that this this contract is horrible per se, but it's really a standard contract because you don't know how that person is going to fare when you put them out there to the public. We don't know if it's going to be the next Beyonce, the next Nicki Minaj, or the next one hit wonder. Imagine how many investors and backers got behind Azealia Banks. 
they lost all their damn money, okay? That was a bad investment. Nobody got their damn return. That happens more times than not. So that's why those contracts look really, really shoddy. It's just a, a regular standard contract, okay? Candy said the same thing. Her and Escape had to sign the same shitty contract like TLC did. About financials, did you watch the TLC movie? What did you think? And did you experience anything close to that being a member of Escape? Definitely. Um, well, I mean, to me, back then, everybody got a bad deal in the beginning, you know? Um, and even now, people still don't get that great of a deal unless you built your own movement before you got signed. You know, so for us, um, you know, our deal sucked. You know, we didn't really get that much money on our first deal. I think we only I think we only had the same amount of points, like seven points off the deal. I mean, that was kind of like, like, you know, for a lot of people, that was the same. I mean, you hear a lot of people saying their deal was sucked. But to me, that's what I expect because in my mind, nobody's going to just go and spend all this money and give you all this money and you haven't proven yourself yet. You know, so everybody went into deals at that time with a sucky deal. And it was all about trying to renegotiate on your second second time around or your third time around or whatever. But fortunately for Escape, they were able to renegotiate, okay, because they sold records. They were able to prove themselves, just like with little Uzi. The problem here with Meg Thee Stallion is that she has not sold anything to be able to prove anything. She may have a big following online. They may love her twerk videos. But like I said earlier, that does not translate into anything tangible. OK, so I really think that a lot of this stuff that she's doing, she is thinking that Rock Nation is going to be her way into the industry. She's going to be that next big thing. And she feels like she can't be that next big thing with Carl and the people she came up with. She's thinking that Jay-Z is going to be the one to just, you know, solidify her. When Nicki Minaj thought the same thing when she went to go work with Diddy and what happened? She was with Diddy not even six months and ended up leaving him and having Benny Medina manage her. You know what I'm saying? Then she went to Young Money. So sometimes those bigger labels and working with those bigger artists, that's not always a good thing. It can even sometimes be a conflict of interest because that person is still in the industry too and they're going to make sure that they get all their shine before you do. Some people don't know how to play background. Mr. Diddy, all in the camera, all in the damn video. You know what I'm saying? So this may not even be the best deal for her, but she don't let Rock Nation gas her up. And I really think that this may really affect her career. Is she going to lose all her fans? Of course not. Are people just not going to buy her music? Of course not. She's still going to have her fans. She's going to have people who buy her music. But I think her antics as of now, what she's doing, is leaving a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. The whole story from the time she came out just did not make any sense. And now, you know, nothing is adding up. And everything that Carl was saying back in November is panning out. They've been trying to sue him. And they're thinking if they come in with the big wig lawyers and try to sue and enforce her out of that contract, you know what I'm saying, that he's just going to fold. But like he said, he's not no broke dude and he's prepared for a fight. And I think it's really sad that she's going this route because I think has she just been honest with them and really talked to him? Because, again, this is somebody who decided to invest in her, his own money, his hard earned money. He decided to invest in her because he saw something in her. And unfortunately, we live in a day and age where there's no more loyalty at all. As soon as some people see what they deem as a better opportunity, they will act like you had nothing to do with their growth. You had nothing to do with supporting them and getting them to where they are. It's so sad, but the industry is really, really dirty. And Carl is learning that the hard way. And Meg is also learning that the hard way. But I can't have any sympathy for her because, again, this was a grown 23-year-old, not 20-year-old woman who also had her mother there, who I heard later on was also a rapper and who's in the industry. So I refuse to believe that they just had no idea what was in the contract, her mother being in the industry, and, you know, being her manager, did not get an entertainment lawyer to look, you know, over everything. She's trying to play crazy now because she feels her opportunity is going to be better with Rock Nation. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. But I can't support this foolishness whatsoever. I'm not feeling that. And then another thing I want to add, if you guys don't know, I posted this on my Instagram page. You guys can go check it out. The tweet that I read earlier about her talking about her intelligence and how she would never, you know, sign herself to a 360 deal. 
she has since deleted that tweet about two hours ago. So the tweet that we found and dug up, she is now deleted. So that tells you a lot. Her moves right now to me are just coming off really, really sneaky. So hopefully she'll be able to drop her record Friday, whatever she's planning on doing. Hopefully it will sell numbers. Again, I feel like this was a lot of hype. This was a way to drop a bunch of sympathy in hopes that people are going to stream it. So then she can get all these numbers and take it to Carl and them and say, look, I broke records. Look, I did this. Look at my streaming numbers. You guys will have to renegotiate with me or at least let me out my contract. And I believe that this is what this was about. This was about manipulating the fans emotionally to get them invested in this when this was a simple situation of some shit that Meg got herself involved in. Nobody else. She was grown when she signed. She knew what she was signing. That's a regular standard contract. Hate it or love it, it is what it is. That'd be the same contract they would give to me if I decide to start, you know, being a professional rapper tomorrow or a professional singer. That'd be the same contract they would give to you if you start deciding to rap or sing. And one thing I also notice is a lot of people are saying, oh, I'm so tired of these slave contracts from, you know, black record labels. How dare Carl give her this type of contract? She's going to be a lot better with Rock Nation. But let me ask you this, you know, since we want to call out, where, where are all these people eating with Jay-Z besides Beyonce and a select few? Because let's not forget, before there was ever a Rock Nation, there was a Rockefeller Records, okay? Where is Beanie Siegel? Is he eating as good as Jay-Z? Where's Freeway? Where's Memphis Bleak? Where are all these people from Rockefeller? Where's Emil? Okay? We can even get back on to Diddy. You got Mace out here calling him out for still owning his publishing. Where's g Depp? Where's Loon? Where's Total? None of these people are eating like the Jay-Zs and Diddy's. So before y'all sit here and big up Rock Nation and try to, you know, down talk Carl over his contract, your favorites have done a lot worse. At least Carl's contract is standard. Diddy still owes Mace's publishing and refuses to let him buy it back for over $2 million. So before we start pointing fingers, know who you guys are defending. Because the only person I really see who's eating from the Rockefeller record era is Jay-Z. Nobody's about to invest in you and give you more of the pie than what they're going to get back. If somebody's investing $100,000 into you to start up your career, they not only want what they put into you, they want something on top of that. And that's just what it is. And until you prove yourself, you are stuck in those contracts for X amount of years. And the way she's going about it is totally shady. So I just think it's a lot of nuances to this situation, but we need to stop excusing foolishness at the end of the day. You know, I just feel like something with this whole, there, there, there's parts missing to her story. OK, there's too many parts missing to her story. I don't think Carl and them did anything wrong at this point. She signed with them. She signed a legally binding contract and then she basically played them, you know, and ran to go sign with the rock. So and then another thing I don't understand is I keep hearing all this stuff about, you know, stay independent. I'm an independent artist, independent, independent. But my thing is. How are you independent if you're signed to a production deal that's under the 300 um, entertainment label? OK, so now let's let's break this down. Who owns 300 Entertainment? 300 Entertainment, it's owned by Lior Cohen and Kevin Lyles and a few other people. Lior Cohen is also under Atlantic Records. OK, so 300 Entertainment is under Atlantic Records. So you cannot be independent if you still have a contract with 300 Entertainment slash 1501 Certified Entertainment slash Atlantic Record. So basically the problem here, what a lot of people are not understanding, is that Meg Thee Stallion was so busy trying to compete with other major girls out here. The Nicki Minaj's, the Cardi B's, um, you know, and other female artists, Doja Cat that she was literally just signing contracts. There's really no logical reason why she signed to two different labels. Everybody keeps talking about Carl Crawford and, you know, Carl this and Jay Prince that, but nobody's talking about Lee R. Cohen and, you know, the 300 Entertainment label that she also signed to. So the reason why Meg is really not getting any money and she's upset because now that she's starting to blow up and she's popping, she's realizing how many hands touch the pot before she ever gets to eat. OK, she signed with Carl's label first. That was March of 2018. 
Then in November of 2018, she signed with 300 Entertainment, okay? So she done signed two deals, but um, 300 Entertainment, their distributor is Atlantic Records. So Atlantic Records is also getting a piece of the pie. And now she has Rock Nation as her management team. So what's really bothering her is that she signed so many contracts and she also needed the advance money because they do get advance money. And she didn't think about the after effects. It's the whole laugh now, cry later mentality. She was worried about the now. She wasn't thinking about later. And now that later is sinking in and she's having to, you know, recoup all this money that she got in advancement and, you know, getting her nails done and traveling and, and all these expenses that these labels, you know, put into her. She now has to pay that back. And it's a lot easier to just pay back one label, one contract, which would be which would be Rock Nation because they're bigger, they're more well known. You know, Jay Z has a name. Than it is to have to pay back Carl and, you know, uh, 300 Entertainment and everything else. So Meg got herself, her grown self, into a very sticky situation. But the problem is a lot of y'all are not researching. A lot of you guys are emotionally invested into something that you guys really shouldn't be that emotionally invested into. Nobody scammed her and nobody forced her to do anything. And a lot of y'all don't even realize that she's signed to not one, but two different labels. Carl's label is mainly dealing with her production. The other label is mainly dealing with distribution. And then now she has Rock Nation as management. Way too many hands in the pot. And now that she's getting that fame and that money, she's realizing that she's trapped in this, you know, slave contract. So all that screaming, I'm independent, I'm independent. There's nothing independent about Meg Thee Stallion in these contracts that she's legally signed to and legally bound to. So a lot of y'all need to really do y'all's research before y'all come for me in the Instagram comment section and call me a hater and, and, you know, just say all types of foolishness. I don't have to hate on anything. This is nothing to be jealous of. Her situation, honestly, is sad to me because as a smart, educated woman that she keeps saying that she is, I'm, I'm super shocked that she would end up in a deal like this. Like that blew my mind. I really could see that with some, you know, hood chick with no parents around her who just did not know any better. But she doesn't come off as that type. And let's not forget, a year ago, she was praising all of these people. She was praising these record labels. Remember, she was the first woman of 300 Entertainment. She was very proud of that. This is another Instagram post that she tried to delete, but I found the receipts. And on this post, she says, this was from November 2018. Hotties, I know y'all been begging for this moment just as much as I've been waiting on it. Many deals were presented to me, but this felt like the right move. And now I'm officially signed. The mother effing Houston hottie is coming to shut it down. Thank you, Carl at 1501 Certified Entertainment and Ferris at T Ferris Money for sticking with me at 300 Entertainment First Motherfucking Lady. That was just in 2018 that she was posting that. So you mean to tell me just two years later, this deal is so horrible? She went in on what the deal was. But the problem is at that point, there was nobody bigger than those two labels willing to rock with her. But now that the rock has come a knocking, now all of a sudden these folks ain't shit. They done scam me. I was a little girl. Oh, woe is me. Y'all better start reading in between the lines and start doing your research and stop getting so emotionally invested into a bunch of bullshit. You guys are being used right now as pawns to try and get her out this contract that she willingly and willfully signed and bragged about. I'm the first mother effing lady. Well, what's the problem now? You like the title when you signed it. But now that you're realizing you're not getting that pot because these people invested their money into you, you have to re they have to recoup their money. You have to pay that back. Now here goes the issue. And the problem is a lot of people just don't understand that these labels have leverages over the artist. People are not going to invest their hard earned money into somebody. And then you tell them that, OK, well, I know you invested all this into me. You bought me to where I'm at. You made me who I am. Now I want to leave you and go on to something better. It does not work that way. It doesn't work that way at all. And at some point in time, we have to take personal responsibility for what we choose to sign. If you do not understand something, Young people need to take this as a lesson learned. Look at your favorite artist and see what they're going through. 
This industry is full of snakes and devils. Once you get with a with a label, a major label, yes, they will push you to stardom. Everybody in the world will know your name and your face, and you'll have that fame that you never thought that you would get. But there's a price with that fame. And that's why you have to read your contract and realize, is it worth it? Is it worth me to sign with a major label and lose so much of my integrity, lose so much of my money, have all these different people eating off of me, than me just owning my own music, my own masters, and me putting it out on SoundCloud. I may not blow up, I may not be a household name, but at least you're getting your full 100% of your money. And you're deciding who you pay. Producers, engineers, things like that. Nobody's just taking it right off the top, and you don't know where that money's going. So again, this is not to knock Meg, okay? This is not to belittle her. But what I'm not going to do is be fake. What I'm going to do is call a spade a spade. I'm not going to sit here and make excuses, okay? What it is, she wants to go to Rock Nation because she feels her star will shine brighter over there. She can be as big or as mainstream as like a Nicki Minaj. That's her goal in all of this. So this entire situation is going to be really interesting. I know this is a long podcast, but I told y'all the breakdown was going to be long and it was not going to be a joke because I actually did my research and I actually have receipts. I'm not just going and talking off of emotion, okay? You know, the whole situation is insane, but again, it's going to be very interesting to see how all this plays out. So thanks again for tuning in to this podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys take something away from this podcast. If I can leave you with anything, be your own self-advocate. Nobody's going to look out for you or care about you and your well-being more than you. It's okay to be a little bit selfish when it comes to protecting yourself from these sharks out here. Stop thinking that everybody in Hollywood, everyone who smiles in your face, everyone who says that they're a fan of you, really have your best interest at heart. Nobody's going to have your best interest at heart like you do. And on that note, I'm out. You guys have a good evening. Thank you for listening to today's show. Make sure you join us again soon. For all the latest tea, make sure you follow me on my social media pages. Just put in L-O-V-E-L-Y-T-I on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube.